Oh yeah, my name is Major Slack and this is the Outer Worlds. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. Let's try to keep this intro quick and painless. I will now take questions. What is the Outer Worlds? This video game was recently released on October 25th. This is a first person shooter with deep RPG elements. Very similar to Fallout 4 with an RPG style so similar to that which you'd find in deep turn-based RPGs um, except this is not turn-based combat it's all real time how do I rate it I give it a perfect 10 10 absolutely love it 2019 game of the year in my humble opinion no contest hands down just give it the award right now and everybody go home seriously um, yeah uh, initially, I thought there was uh, way too much dialogue, but it's it's all skippable, and I've since discovered there's usually um, a way to get to the point in every conversation. So no, that long that no longer bothers me. Um, no blathering NPC chit chat while you're out doing missions. Combat is spectacular. Graphics are great. Fun factor through the roof. Highly addictive. I'm sure this game is going to result in a lot of guys getting divorced from their wives for making them video game widows and or getting fired from their jobs for taking too many days off work. Very well designed game. Yes. <laughs> Hats off to Obsidian. This came out of nowhere. Like, you know, no major hype. Just like, you know, just, just came out of nowhere and blasted onto the scene. And, and uh, I love it. Everybody loves it. Um, yeah, it's great. It has some... I would say very minor performance issues, nothing really to write home about. Um, I'm actually pretty sure I could clear all that up by making some minor tweaks to the INI file when I get a chance. What about Borderlands 3? Uh, very quickly, the Borderlands 3 walkthrough will continue. Don't worry, I have every intention of completing that run. I'll be doing both these walkthroughs at the same time. Yeah, I'll try to upload four videos a week for both walkthroughs. Um, yeah, my already grossly over encumbered workload is going to get even heavier. Hey, how about a thumbs up for that, eh? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, I'll post the schedule on my uh, about page. A tentative schedule will be the Outer Worlds Sunday to Wednesday and Borderlands 3 Tuesday to Friday. Saturday off as usual, um, but that means that on Tuesday and Wednesday you'll get double uploads. Yep. Uh, I'll try that to start, see if I can manage that workload without having to give up too many, uh, you know, leisure activities like uh, eating and sleeping, you know, <laughs> you know, those things that, those little things that make life more enjoyable. Don't forget, these are real walkthroughs, um, which take a lot of practice and study to produce, all right? These are not just streams of my first playthrough. Right? Blind playthroughs do have their merits, but that's not the way we do things here at Major Slack Videos. As an example, in the Outer Worlds, I spent a whopping 60 hours on the first map alone. All right, 60 hours on the first map. Yeah, so um, what you're about to see, um, no bumbling, stumbling here. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to get it done quickly. I'm recording this walkthrough on the PC version, running it through the Epic Games launcher. No Steam version yet um, barely even in sight a tentative and very vague uh, steam release date is 2020 2020 wins like that that's all i know that's all they say if you look up uh the outer worlds on steam that's all they say Re release date 2020 yeah thanks thanks for all the details there steam that's all we know so far i think there may be a few articles kicking around that may give a more i don't even know if it's accurate if the steam doesn't know themselves and how can you know, somebody else know better when there's going to be, you know. Anyways, um, yeah, sometime next year. <laughs> I also have this game currently installed on my PS4 and my YouTube assistant DJ Red Angel is running the game on Xbox. So we got it covered. Um, hey, that's it for the intro. This is The Outer Worlds. Music off, subtitles on, Supernova difficulty, the hardest difficulty in the game. And I'm going to make it even harder by going with no companions. No companions? No companions. Yeah. Alright, you hardcore slackers, saddle up, lock and load. Let's do this. Major Slack videos. Okay, here we go. The Outer Worlds, new game. Boom. Supernova. 
And I'll just zoom in the screen so you can read this all this a lot better. This is what the um, rules of engagement are all about. The toughest difficulty in the game. Plus they add on some survival elements such as you must eat, drink, and sleep to survive. Okay, that's going to be constantly um, um, after you. Okay, and we'll see that in effect as the game progresses. And there's a whole bunch of other things. Um, you can only fast travel to your ship. You can only sleep inside your ship. If you get injured, you have to sleep to um, heal yourself. Um, something they don't mention here. Here yeah, at the bottom, yeah, you can only manually save while inside your ship and auto saves are limited. You only get three auto saves and you can only manually save inside your ships. Yeah, so a lot of the times it's pretty much permadeath. If you die, you have to start over from, you know, not permadeath, but you know, you have to start over from your last save. By the way, fair warning right now, if you're going to run on supernova mode, this is something I just recently discovered. They only give you three autosaves. If you run another character, any other character, um, along with your supernova character, your autosaves are gonna be overwritten by that, that other character. It's not three autosaves per character. It's three autosaves per game. So beware, eh? If you're relying on an auto save in your supernova run, and you you switch back to another character and start playing as him, those auto saves in that other character are going to overwrite your auto saves in your supernova run. All right, so beware. All right, um, that's it. Let's do it. Stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars. Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny. When you go out of this world, to the Halcyon Colony. Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Okay, we get to spend some points. Let's get to it. This is, uh, to newcomers, this may be very daunting. I can explain it all about this right now. Um, I'm going to turn the sound off because every time you spend a point, uh, Phineas is going to comment on that. And I'm going to find that very distracting as I'm giving you a tutorial on attributes and skills. All right, here we go. Um, first of all, like I said, this is for newcomers who want to understand what the hell is going on here. If you already understand the game mechanics and you just want to get to the part where I show you what kind of build I'm going to make, check out the timestamp at the bottom of the screen here and just simply skip ahead to that part. All right, everybody else, let the video roll, and I will now give you a crash course in attributes and skills. Attributes, you get six attributes to spend at the beginning of the game. This is a one-shot deal. You're not gonna, this is not gonna happen any other time during the game, although there are many other things in the game that will affect your attributes. This is the only time you'll get a screen like this to spend six points like this, all right? Next, it is a lot easier to understand what attributes all about if we first uh, move to the skill screen and do an overview of that. So let's just do that right now. This is just for demonstrational purposes. We can do come back here. Um, this is not the build I'm going to create. Okay, 
just for demonstration purposes, put one point into every attribute. This will allow us to advance to the next screen, skills. Okay, so here we go. We have 18 skills here. These skills are the big money, all right? These 18 skills. This is going to largely define what, what kind of build and what kind of gameplay you're going to um, engage in in the outer worlds, okay? You have melee, handguns, dodge, dialogue here. It's, it's all laid out there, all right? And what you have here is kind of like the skills are kind of like grouped into these groups called core skills. The game calls these groups core skills and they call these skills specialized skills. Uh, throughout the walkthrough, I'm just going to refer to these specialized skills as skills. It's a lot easier. And the core skills, well, we'll refer to those as core skills. In the beginning, you get two, what I'm going to call mega points. These mega points are worth 10 normal points that you get in the game. All right. So, and in the beginning, um, you can only add points to the core skills these seven core skills. So here we have two points. Each point is worth 10 points. Add, just for demonstrational purposes, let's add one point to melee and one point to ranged. And as you can see, it increased all the, all the skills in each group by 10. All right. Back on the attributes screen, if you don't have any points in attributes, all these skills start out basically at six. By adding one point to each attribute, we increase each and every skill by six and that bumped it up to 12 and now that we've added these mega points to melee and range all these skills are bumped up to 22. Now with each and every skill there's certain plateaus 20, 40, 60, 80 and 100. As you reach a certain plateau with any skill you get these bonuses. So here we have melee, one-handed melee has reached level 20, we can now do power and sweep attacks with one-handed melee weapons. Same with two-handed melee, now that it's up to 20, we can now do power and sweep attacks with two-handed melee weapons. And when you reach level 40, you unlock this. When you really reach level 60, you unlock this, and so on and so forth, all right? Next, um, as you can progress through the game, you're gonna get some skills over 50. As soon as the skill reaches 50, you no longer increase it by adding points to, the, to its core skill. You can only increase it by adding points directly to the skill itself. You will now be given that opportunity to add points directly to the skill itself. Um, and we'll explain, I'll explain more about that when that time comes, but uh, be advised that that's what's going to happen. And what I'm going to do right now is just simply hover over every skill so that you can see all the bonuses that are unlocked as you reach each level 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100, okay? This is the best way to decide how to spend your attributes and skill points. Go over each and every one, look at all these, decide what your play style is, and then apply points appropriately to um, you know, complement your particular play style. It's that simple. Basically, you're just getting a head start on your skill development. That's what these points are all about right now. Getting a head start on your skill development. All right, and it's gonna vary it's going to vary greatly according to your games, your particular play style, how you want to play the game. Next, um, where do I start? It's like, okay, there are three skills that you definitely want at or cl as close to level 20 as soon as possible. Those three skills, th this is for any build, okay? Regardless of what build, I would highly recommend you try to get these skills at level 20 or as close to level 20 as soon as possible. Those skills are one, science. This will unlock the ability to tinker weapons and the ability to improve your weapons and armor, especially on higher difficulty, difficulty levels, is absolutely essential. You want that. You want to unlock that right away. Next, engineering. Um, 
this will unlock the ability to repair your weapons out in the field okay and by the way all weapons and armor break down with use the more you use them the more they break down the more they break down the less efficient they become with weapons they just simply do less damage and that's even more profound when you're playing on higher, higher difficulty settings like supernova all right so you want to be able to unlock the ability to do repairs right out of your inventory as soon as possible otherwise you're gonna have to find a workbench to repair your weapons and there's nothing worse than being out in the field in the middle of a mission and having your weapon break down and doing less damage um, and you're counting on that damage and you can't repair it because you're not near you're not near a workbench right so that's another skill you want at level 20 as soon as possible and the third one you want at level 20 as soon as possible is hack okay the ability to sell stuff to vending machines is only unlocked when you get hack to 20 and there are all kinds of vending machines all over the place but there are not all kinds of merchants all over the place there are a lot more vending machines than there are merchants and when you get overloaded there's nothing you can do with the stuff that is in your inventory um, except sell it or you could maybe find a place to store it but you know um, you know you need to sell it. you need the ability to sell stuff to vending machines and that is unlocked by getting hacked to 20 as soon as possible okay so just quick over quick view quick review blah, blah, blah. Go away, Mr. Mamama. Quick review. Hack, science, and engineering up to 20 as soon as possible for any build. All right, to get all that, going to be pop quiz tomorrow. Back to attributes. Um, let's go to skill and let's unspend these points here. Back to attributes. Let's unspend all these points here. These attributes are a loose, non-exclusive grouping of skills. Each skill will appear in two attributes. And it's pretty much juggled around. So you're going to have to look over each and every attribute, hover over and figure out what skills you want to get a head start on, and then apply attribute points to get a head start on those skills. Um, you start out with six points. You can actually subtract points from any attribute. One one point from any any attribute to give yourself more points to work with. So for example, let's subtract one from dexterity, one from perception, and one from temperament. This will give you nine points to work with. This is the maximum you can do. Because let's say for example, let's subtract another point from strength. This will give you ten points to work with, but you can't spend them all because the maximum number of points you can spend um, is three so now it's impossible to spend all the points we could put three in intelligence and three in charm we still got four points left over and there's nothing you can do you can't advance to the next screen this is an impossible situation all right so the most you can subtract is um, one one point from any three attributes next let's just subtract one point from every attribute this is an impossible situation just for demonstrational purposes, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and hover over each and every attribute. As you can see, there's a penalty involved when you subtract a point from a certain attribute. And I'm going to hover over each and every attribute so you see what kind of penalty is involved and whether you can tolerate that penalty or not. Some of them are pretty heavy penalties. Some of them I would never put up with. For example, this penalty right here, no headshot or weak spot damage taking one point out of perception. All right. But you know, hey, different strokes. Um, each and every person plays a little differently. Maybe you could deal with that. Um, I would never put up with that. All right, let's put everything back to normal. You get more bang for your buck by concentrating your attribute points. For example, let's just put one point into each and every attribute again, spreading them out really thin all the way across the board. Everything is at good. This will increase all our skills by six up to 12. Now there's 18 skills. If you multiply 18 times 12, that gives you 216, let's call it skill levels, all right? 216 skill levels multiply 18 times 12. Let's go back to the attribute screen. Now let's put three points in strength 
and three points in dexterity, both at very high, everything else is at average. We go next to the skill screen. If you add up, first of all, you have now had two skills at 30, one-handed melee and block. And if you add up all these skill levels, your total skill level count will come out to 256. So as you can see, you get a lot more bang for your buck if you um, concentrate your skill allocation or your attribute point allocation here instead of like spreading it out thin across the board concentrate them and you get more bang for your buck all right um, the highest you can get any skill at this point is 30 so don't try to get any higher that's the highest you can get and so far I mean maybe somebody can discover even something better but so far what I've discovered is the very most the most number of skills you can get up to 30 by a certain configuration of attribute points here is five. You can do that by going, once again, same thing, subtract one from dexterity, one from perception, and one from temperament, and put three points in strength, three points in intelligence, three points in charm. Go to the skill screen, and we now have a whopping five skills at 30. Persuade, intimidate, hack, science, and inspiration. Now, whether this is a good build or not, I don't know, you'd be the judge. I don't think it is, but hey, maybe somebody can make that work for them, okay? But if you're really after the big money, you want like the absolute, like, you know, if you want to try to min-max, you know, the situation here, that's that's one thing you could do. So you just have to play around with your expenditure of attribute points and you can get a lot more skills up at 30, but be advised that a lot more skills will start at zero, all right? I think here it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, five skills starting out at zero. Now, whether you can tolerate that or not, I don't know. Like I said, it you know you be the judge whether that's a good build or not. I wouldn't do it personally. I wouldn't do it. And I think that's about it. That pretty much covers everything. Um, let's put everything back to zero. We are playing on Supernova, and I'm going with no companions. You definitely want to go stealth. If you're playing on Supernova, and you're going no companions, and you don't want to play stealth, well, hey, we'll notify your next of kin, okay? <laughs> uh, no, it's going to be a bitch. It's going to be a bitch already. So I would strongly recommend, if you're going to follow this walkthrough, go stealth. And this is the build that I'm going to create in the beginning. Okay, I'm going to turn the sound back on. I'm going to tell you the how my points expenditure now because Phineas is going to comment every time I click on one of these points here and then I'll apply that all the points afterwards. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take one point at a time. Since we're going with no companion, we don't need uh, companion ability refresh. Positive faction reputation reactions, that's not such a big deal. And negative faction reputation reactions, that's not such a big deal either, in my humble opinion. So I'm going to subtract one point Come from on, charm. Phineas, pick one and leave. Shut up, Phineas. <laughs> um, I'm going to subtract one from charm, put three points in temperament, two points in dexterity, and two points in intelligence. All right? You've one from charm. Commonly described as odious Green temperament. Boys. Two in dexterity and two in intelligence, and that will bring sneak up to twenty-five. And we get two-handed close to twenty. Here, I'm going to put one point in stealth and one point in tech. Things tend to vanish off tables whenever you're around. And by doing that, we'll get the three skills that I like. What I considered essential skills at twenty. Um, already at 20 hack science and engineer already at 20 so we unlock those abilities uh vending machines the ability to tinker and the ability to do field repairs that is all it's like you know we can just set it and forget it you know we don't have to worry about that anymore it's all done next aptitude this is also a one-time deal okay i'm just going to hover over each and every aptitude uh, a lot of the bonuses are pretty pitiful fair warning
You get all that? Gonna be a pop quiz tomorrow. Okay, we're going with medical technician junior grade. Maybe you can do something about this uh, lump in my neck. Quiet, you. We're doing a walkthrough here. Okay, and here is your cosmetic screen. Here's where you get to um, define how your character looks. Tons of options. Okay, you probably spend a day here. I'm not going to, of course. I'm going to choose a male character. Leave the face at default. Let's put the hairstyle at... I think it was 27. Mohawk, there we go. Hair color, 17. Nice green mohawk. Beautiful. Eyebrow style, I didn't really choose one. Um, let's choose something bushy. I forget, I think it was like 29 or something like that. Here, wait a minute. There, that works. Facial hair, let's set that at nine. Facial hair color, let's set that at uh, 46 is the one I selected. There we go. All right, wait a minute. There we go. Next, features. Makeup, 41. <laughs> Dirt, five. Scar, nine. Age, the youngest, and that's our boy. Ready for the wasteland. What are we gonna name him? We shall call him. Okay, the names I was going with in Praxis Friends, the one I had, uh, the one I, my favorite was Buzz Lightbeer. <laughs> Another name I came up with for, especially for Supernova, was Bossa Nova. That's kind of cheesy though. Let's go with Buzz Lightbeer. There we go, that's our boy, Buzz Lightbeer. There's an overview of everything we did, and let's do it to it. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. By the way, all these cutscenes are skippable. So when you start over, you don't have to sit through them all again. On the PC version, just hold down the enter button. Please power down your engines and prepare to be not likely bootlickers. <sighs> Initiate skip jump. There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck!
Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you. should be close by. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. Nasty way to go. That's what I was waiting for. And now he's going to shut up. Don't worry. Um, it's not like Borderlands where um, you have these NPCs um, blathering away in your head all through missions. No, it's like, not like that. They pretty much leave you alone. Okay. Quick crash course on the HUD and the UI. First of all, the HUD. Up in the upper left corner, you got the red bar. That's your health bar. The purple bar is your tactical time dilation meter. What the hell is that? It's like basically it's slow mo. That's it. It's slow mo mode, and I'll show you about that later on. Um, below that, you have the button. For me, it's Z. You press to uh, give yourself health. Uh, next to that, you can dodge whatever button that is for you. Just double press that. You can dodge back, and you can change that to dodging forward if you um, get your dodge skill up to twenty. which is actually quite useful. Here you go, get this up to 20 and you'll unlock the, the ability to dodge forward by double pressing and holding forward. Below that you see three kind of beige, short beige bars. Those are your survival meters. They only appear on supernova mode. The one on the far left is hunger, the one in the middle is thirst, and the one on the right is rest or fatigue. Um, the one that's going to really nag you all the time, I'm going to tell you right now, is thirst. All right. So, and usually there's lots of food, but there's not much to drink. So, um, if you're thinking about going on supernova mode, that's the thing that's really going to nag you. Um, got a nice compass along the top there, north, south, east, west. You know, scroll it around and you see which direction you're going. The green marker is your objective marker what, for whatever mission you have currently um, activated. And you can just point your cursor right at the green marker to see what your objective is. So if your objective is to go see Sally at, uh, you know, whatever, just point at your marker and you'll see, go, go to, you know, whatever the objective is, just point it and you'll get a reminder. Um, other than that, it's a pretty clean HUD. Let's go into the UI. Go to character. First thing, go to, no, actually first thing, go to journal and codex. Boom, here's your help help file. Pretty extensive. One word, read. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty extensive and it's well written. Some parts are occasionally vague, but yeah, read it all. This will help you a lot. The in-game tutorials in this game, um, are, you can actually turn them off. You go to settings. Yeah, you can turn them off. Here they are. Enable tutorials, tutorial notifications. I've got it turned off because I know the game like the back of my hand now. Um, while we're here, a couple of things you should turn off or on right away. Gameplay, show player helmet and show companion, show companion helmets. Turn those both off. You don't need them. This just uh, refers to whether you want to see a helmet on your character 
here in the UI or not, you don't need it on. You're still going to get the benefits of the helmet when you're playing, but if you'd like to see what your character looks like, turn those off. And same when you get the uh, companion screens, when you get a companion, if you're going to have companions, the same thing, you want to see what your companion looks like. Next. Show base item stats. This is turned on by default. Turn that off so you can see how much damage your weapons are doing according to how like you know all your skill expenditures and what kind of bonuses you're enjoying at the moment otherwise it's just going to show um that weapon's dps which i find you know it's a lot more useful to to see actual damage per hit so turn that off by default another thing you should turn off or something that should be adjusted is uh right here show responses while listening this is turned off by default you want to turn this on click to check this okay because every time you get into a dialogue once you get familiar with the game you don't want to have to wait till the guy stops talking before you get your choices of how to respond you know you want this all the replies to show immediately so like you know if you get tired of him talking you just like click on a reply so check that by default and I think that's about it. Everything else is, you know, at your discretion. I've turned up the field of view to 90. That's what I feel comfortable with. And that's that. Back to the UI. You want a review of your character, your skills and whatnot. Go to character, summary, or skills. This is the screen you access when you level up. Every time you level up, you get 10 skill points to spend and they're not like the skill points that you get at the beginning they're actually like one point it's worth one point so you get like 10 points if you put one point into melee it will increase one-handed and two-handed melee by one not by 10 so it's not like the beginning where you get these what i call mega points okay it's going to be normal um every other level that you level up you'll get a perk point as well and for those of you who are thinking hey slack the game wasn't meant to be played without companions. Eh, wrong. They actually give you a perk that gives you bonus damage if you play without companions. Okay, so it's actually viable. And the developers are fully intend that as an option in the game. Uh, what else we got here? Details. This is um, what you can access to see how much XP you need to get to the next level and all kinds of other interesting details about your character, your current, you know, what's going on with the character. Maximum health, health regen, um, armor rating, sprint speed, crouch speed, and tactical time dilation duration. And that's a real mouthful. Tactical time dilation. Henceforth, they're going to refer to it simply as tactical time. Reputation. There's all kinds of factions. Um, everybody in the game is killable, by the way. <laughs> um, if you want to go that route, uh, there's several videos out there. One guy did a pretty funny video. Um, playing as a psychopath, killed everybody in the game. Another guy is actually doing a walkthrough where he's, you know, intent on killing everybody in the game. We're not going to kill everybody in the game, although, fair warning, we're not. I'm not going to play as a total goody two shoes. Okay, we do our moral compass is going to be a, a little off, a little bit. Okay, um, hey, it's a video game, and um, every time you kill someone, you lose reputation with that particular faction, and this will affect different things throughout the game such as vending or not vending machine prices, merchant prices and other stuff. Um, all right. And that's, there's too many details to explain about that, to go into detail about that. Now inventory, this is your inventory. It is separated into seven different tabs, weapons, armor, armor is like you have armor and a helmet. That's it. But there's all different kinds of armor and helmets. Okay. And that those combined will, you know, give you your armor rating. Um, so weapons, armor, this is what you start out with. Everyone starts out with this and that's it. Consumables. This is your health. You get 10 of these so-called health adrenal healing heals 25% of your health over two seconds. Start out with 10. These are your health, um, slots. You can put other consumables in these slots. And then every time you press your health button, you, you take health. 
and you take whatever consumables in that slot. You can un unlock slot number three and slot number four by putting points into medical. Okay, go back to character skills, scroll down to medical. And as you can see, we've unlocked the second slot. To unlock the third slot, you need medical at 40. Note that this armor gives a boost to all tech skills and medical is a tech skill so our medical is actually over 40 now but um, it does not unlock the level 40 bonus it doesn't work like that you actually have to put points into tech manually to get medical up to 40 manually before you unlock the third slot all right that's the way that works in case you're wondering about that and the fourth slot is unlocked by getting medical up to 80. That's the deal with that. Back to inventory. Mods, you're going to get tons of mods as you go through the game. Mods can be applied to weapons and armor. These are here. This is general. Quest-related items appear here. And junk. Any item in your inventory can be set as junk. And then when you go to a vending machine, you just hold down the junk button and you automatically sell everything that is designated as junk. So, for example, if I want to set this as junk, I just press the Z button and it goes to my junk right and you can unset it you know just remove and it'll go back to your armor right that's that here's where all your quests appear if you go to journal and quests we only have one quest right now stranger in strange land and finally the map this is our starting map on supernova mode we have to walk everywhere the only place we're allowed to fast travel to is our ship and we haven't discovered our ship yet. It's the ship is right here. All right. After that, we have to walk everywhere. If you're not playing on supernova mode, you're going to unlock fast travel points all over like one in Edgewater, one at the landing pad, one here, one here, one here. I think there may be one there. Yeah. But, um, and you'll see also on supernova mode, you'll see those fast travel points unlocked, but you won't be able to use them. The only one you'll be able to use is the one at your ship. Um, that's about it. If you're playing on supernova mode, um, I should probably get into this in the next video because it'd be easier to explain once we get to our ship. Yeah, Priority number one, if you're playing on supernova mode, is have we unlocked that objective yet? Let me just check here. No, we don't know anything about that. Okay, so to avoid spoilers, I'm not going to talk about that until that actually happens. Um, saves. In supernova mode, you can only save the game, as mentioned earlier, manually save. If you're not in supernova mode, let's just start with that. If you're not in supernova mode, you may be wondering what's the save system like. It's great. You can save the game anywhere. Manual save anywhere you like and as many saves as you like. And also the game is also um, creating auto saves and there's also a quick save option. I'm not sure if there's a quick save option on the PS4 version. I kind of forget if there is or not, but on the PC version, there's a quick save option and a quick load option. And you also get auto saves. On Supernova mode, you can only manually save your game at the ship and nowhere else. The game will give you an auto save, however, whenever you go, when you transition from interior to out exterior and vice versa. And it will also give you an auto save every time you fast travel back to your ship. And the auto save will be created just before you fast travel back to your ship. So one kind of cheesy way to create a quick save, a kind of sort of a quick save in supernova mode is to simply fast travel back to your ship. Then um, exit to main menu and load that auto save and you'll be back at the spot where you fast traveled back to your ship and it will kind of act as a kind of quick save so that's one way around that and I may be using that from time to time throughout this walkthrough and I think that about covers it that's your crash course on outer worlds that's your boot camp did you get all that it's gonna be a pop quiz tomorrow yep tomorrow we're gonna get right into the game um, and get into the war start playing the game so that's it uh, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and if you thought this video was remotely entertaining, hey, don't forget to give the old Slackster a big old thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to make sure you get all my Outer Worlds videos hot off the press. All right, see you next video. 
Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes. Alright, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.